Greetings, I'm Stephen Fluharty, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. Thank you for joining us as we salute and celebrate you, the wonderful, the talented College of Arts and Sciences class of 2021. I also welcome all of the parents, family members, and loved ones who are watching. I hope that all of you are well in these pandemic times. I speak for the entire Arts and Sciences faculty in saying how much we have missed being together with you on campus for your classes during the past two and a half semesters. I hope that seeing your professor's hard work in keeping your classes going online has reinforced for you the enormous value of their instruction and how deeply they care about you and your learning. This 14 month period coming as it does at the end of your Penn career certainly adds an unusual dimension to your overall college experience, one that you will never forget and one from which you have learned a great deal. But this period alone does not define your Penn career. I would argue the opposite, that the qualities that have sustained you during this unsettled time are a tribute to your Penn education itself. As the world has changed in unprecedented ways, you have been prepared to understand the enormously complex scientific, social, and economic issues facing the global community. And far beyond the content of what you have learned in your courses, you have been sustained by what, I, by what I'll call the habits of the mind that you acquired throughout your Penn liberal arts education. Throughout this period, you have shown incredible intellectual agility in adapting to new ways of study, strength of character, and showing support for your friends, family, and our larger society, and support for social justice. You have also demonstrated how much you value learning itself and the remarkable lengths you will go in order to do so. There are qualities that will serve you throughout your life and in whatever paths you follow after Penn. You are ready to go out into the world and make your ideas matter, knowing that the key to happiness and success is that never ending process of discovery. To me, that is what the word commencement signifies, not simply the one time start of the rest of your life after college, but the broader spirit of new beginnings, new experiences, and new ways of thinking that I hope your arts and science education has taught you to embrace. You will have many such commencements in your life as you encounter new jobs, people, places, and ideas, and there will be countless shifts in the world around you, though hopefully not as dramatic as the ones you have witnessed during the pandemic. These commencements will not come with diplomas or caps or gowns, but we believe that your preparation at Penn has given you the timeless tools you need to adapt to and indeed drive the exciting and ongoing change that awaits you. There is nothing that can take this moment of joy away from you. Regardless of where you are as you watch this celebration, you are crossing the threshold from Penn students to Penn alumni. You should be incredibly proud of all that you have achieved. On behalf of the entire Arts and Sciences family, I offer our most heartfelt congratulations to you on completing your Penn degrees. It is now my pleasure to introduce Paul Snugalski, Dean of the College. Paul is a distinguished scholar of biology, an award-winning teacher, and the superb leader of our undergraduate programs in the liberal arts. Members of the extraordinary College of Arts and Sciences class of 2021, let me add my congratulations to those of Dean Fluharty and all of the staff, faculty, and administrators of our school. Let me also acknowledge something right away. We'd all rather be celebrating your college graduation in person on a beautiful night in Franklin Field with families and loved ones. I know that many of you were able to attend the university's in-person commencement ceremony, but out of an abundance of caution, we decided that virtual celebrations in the schools were the way to go again this year. And what a year this has been. Looking back over the past 14 months or so since our move out and transition to online teaching and learning in March 2020, I'm reminded of everything we've all been through 
and my deepest sympathies and condolences go out to all who have lost friends or family to the pandemic or have suffered the hardships brought on by its economic effects. Through all this, you have prevailed in finishing your college degrees under the most extraordinary and challenging circumstances. All of us who teach, advise, and serve in other capacities in the college and the broader university are in awe of your stamina, your resilience, and your sheer faith in seeing this through. You have played a vital partnership role this year in keeping the educational mission of the college moving forward. I hope that my remarks and those of others in this recorded celebration succeed in conveying our deep appreciation and our pride in all of you as you complete your undergraduate educational journeys here at Penn. And it's very easy to be proud of your class. As you've made your way through the college's rigorous curriculum, you have also engaged with the Penn community, Philadelphia, and the world in so many ways. In their many co-curricular activities, members of your class have kept their athletic dreams alive through suspended or shortened seasons, have reached out to our community in academically-based community service courses, have kept their research projects going remotely, have served your classmates, the college and the university as leaders in the UA, SKU, the Dean's Advisory Board and the Figley Dean's Advisory Board, have kept us informed by investigating and writing for the DP and other outlets and have engaged passionately with the social, political and environmental concerns of our time. So take a moment to realize the depth and breadth of all you have achieved here in and beyond your formal coursework. And while you're at it, do make a note to thank your parents, guardians, and pre-college mentors who did so much to help make this possible for you. As graduates of the college, you have earned an academic credential that is distinctly American in its history and in its promise for the future, a degree in the liberal arts and sciences. As you know, Better than anyone, what is characteristic of a liberal arts education is its great breadth of modes of inquiry and ways of approaching fundamental subjects. And this breadth was perhaps even a challenge at times as you made your way through the elements of the college's broad general requirement. But reflect now and with great pride that as holders of a degree from the college, you can calculate, analyze, write, and speak, and can interact across cultures both within and outside the US. You can take account of history when considering the present and the future. You can appreciate and participate in the arts in their diverse forms and manifestations. You can recognize the value of real science in your everyday lives. And yes, you can and you do recognize BS and nonsense when you see it. The meaning of the liberal arts is there in what you've achieved. These are the ideal capacities of a free person in a global society, and they are now yours. You will lead the college into a world that continues to recover from the pandemic that drove us all off campus last spring, a world that is still very different from what we all took so much for granted less than two years ago. But I speak for all of us here at Penn when I say that we know we will see you do the good work of moving this world forward again and making sense of our times. Members of your class will produce the great works of art that help us understand this time, will become the scientists and social scientists who prevent another such pandemic from happening, and will do the work of ensuring that the inequities and injustices this year has exposed so clearly in our country and the world diminish in the future. For this is what you have made yourselves capable of in all your academic work and engagement here. College class of 2021, this is not the end of our celebration of you, it is the beginning. As your teachers, advisors, and friends, we know that you represent the college's contribution to a bright future for us all, and we look forward to staying in touch personally and professionally and celebrating your successes in the coming years and decades. From all of us in the college, faculty, administrators, and staff, you have our deepest love and pride as graduates of our institution. Congratulations to all of you, the extraordinary, resilient college class of 2021. It is a great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Justin Greenman, representing the college class of 2021. Justin, who was born and raised in northern New Jersey, 
is a double major in history and political science. He was an undergraduate fellow in the Wolf Humanities Center, a member of the History Department Honors Thesis Program, a Meltzer intern in the Jewish Studies Program, and a Penn in Poland fellow for Penn Hillel. He was also a member of Penn's Phi Alpha Theta and Phi Pi Sigma Alpha Honor Society chapters. Outside of classes, Justin served two years as president of the Penn Government and Politics Association, hosted a talk show on WQHS, and sat on the History Undergraduate Advisory Board and the Penn Library Advisory Board. Highlights of his time at Penn include traveling to the Gerald Ford Presidential Library and Museum for Research, watching riveting games in the students section at the Palestra, and spending Friday nights at services and Shabbat dinners at Steinhardt Hall. After graduation, Justin will begin a master's in history program at New York University with the goal of getting a PhD in history and becoming a college history professor. My fellow classmates, the 2021 graduates of the College of Arts and Sciences, it is an honor to speak with you and our friends and family as part of our college graduation ceremony. If there is one thing that has become apparent over the last year, it is that the class of 2021 will forever go down in the annals of Penn for our resilience. I am a history major, and as a student of the past, I can tell you for better and for worse, future books, movies, and textbooks on 2021 will define us as a class by the last 15 months. The speed with which our lives were upended back in March 2020, the terror and loneliness many of us have felt as the coronavirus arrived on our campus, in our city, and in our communities around the world. The uniqueness of a Zoom-centered senior year, the activism we conducted in the run-up to the 2020 presidential election, and so much more in what has been a one-of-a-kind year plus. But that does not mean that we have to define our Penn experience by the past 15 months. It is not how I will, and I urge each of my fellow graduates to do the same. For my Penn experience, I'll remember getting lost, walking to Fagan Hall during NSO for the Penn Reading Project, and somehow ending up at the baseball field. I'll remember my first Quaker football game and accidentally throwing the toast too early, even though my uncle claims he started the toast tradition and to this day has not let me hear the end of it. I also remember the pride we felt celebrating with the Philadelphia community when the Eagles finally won their first Super Bowl and the contagious joy that filled the palestra when we beat Villanova. We all have a course we'll remember forever, a professor we established a lifelong connection with, a club that was home, a Penn community we made our own. For me, it was Communications 395 with David Eisenhower, an Annenberg class, and the Penn Government and Politics Association. For you all, it was surely something different, and that is the beauty of Penn. Whether at our first reunion or our 50th, we'll recall the roommates we lived with for all four years, or just one, the significant others we took to the bio pond. I cannot relate, but you don't win them all. The endless wind emanating from the high rises, and yes, of course, all the hard work and dedication it took to make it to this moment in our Penn journey. Though our specific steps through the past four years were different, they were only possible here. When President Gutman welcomed us to Penn at our convocation four long and winding years ago, she said our Penn journey must start with the touch of humanity, an extended hand, a shared smile. We feel connection, empathy, and we begin to understand the experiences and outlooks of others. We learn new things together. Then Convocation had a selfie break so we could start developing these connections. Of course, we have not been able to take as many selfie breaks over the last year as we would have liked, but the shared experiences she wanted us to feel have occurred. The last four years, the good, the bad, and everything in between has been our shared experience our collective selfie break. Though we have been apart more than most graduating classes, we have also been more together in the need for that touch of humanity, more united in what we have had to overcome. Among us may be the next president of the United States, we have already had two, the next medical professional inspired by our healthcare heroes, or the next lawyer fighting for a better tomorrow for all. 
Many of you will even one day be proud Penn parents coming back to alumni weekend in May and then that August watching your child take their selfie breaks with the class of 2051. Honestly, I'm not sure what the next chapter of our lives will bring. President Gunman ended that convocation speech asking us to venture boldly into the unknown. And to some of us, that is all the truer today. Yet, whatever we make of the last four years, whatever we take from our experiences in the School of Arts and Sciences, wherever we go from here, remember, always, do find comfort in the fact that we've come this far together. Never forget that you will always be a Penn Quaker, a proud college alum, a member of the class of 2021, not just the class of resilience. Thank you. I am delighted to introduce one of our distinguished arts and sciences faculty as a featured guest speaker. Mary Frances Berry is the Geraldine R. Siegel Professor of American Social Thought, Professor of History, and Professor of Africana Studies. Professor Berry has had a distinguished career in both public service and academia. From 1980 to 2004, she was a member of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, serving as its chair from 1993 to 2004. Between 1977 and 1980, she was the Assistant Secretary for Education in the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Professor Berry is an eminent scholar of U.S. constitutional and legal history and of African-American history. She has offered numerous, authored numerous books. Most recently, History Teaches Us to Resist, How Progressive Movements Have Succeeded in Challenging Times. Among her many honors, she is a distinguished fellow of the American Society for Legal History and the recipient of 35 honorary degrees. Professor Berry is retiring in June after 34 years on the Penn faculty. We have been honored by her presence in our community, and I am grateful to her for speaking as part of this important celebration. Students in the School of Arts and Sciences graduating class of 2021, I want to congratulate each of you, and of course I congratulate your relatives and friends on this wonderful occasion and the faculty, which of course shares with you the responsibility for your accomplishments. And we cannot forget the administrators and the staff who manage everything so that we could engage in this academic enterprise and knew enough to get out of the way after they had done so. Among you, are the best students I've had in class in all the years I've taught at Penn. Actually, I say that to every group of students I teach, and it's true for the most part. What we are recognizing at this graduation ceremony is more than academic attainment, although we're recognizing your achievement. We, we did this in the midst of a pandemic which has had differential effects. And it continues to underscore some of the problems we have in our society, including the wealth and health gaps. We know that there are some people who have been able to get vaccinated and others who have not yet. We know that there are people who want testing and haven't been able to figure out how to do that. We know that there are people who have had inadequate health care during this period. All of these problems, and there then are the problems of race and inequality in our society and the perpetuation of white supremacy, which we have not yet been able to remedy sufficiently. But those of us here are, of course, lucky. We made it through. Some of you may have felt traumatized because you experienced minor but unusual discomforts in this period if you had been used to everything working well, like clockwork, and then all of a sudden there are all these changes, no matter how minor, you may be uh, severely discomforted. But there are others who really suffered, along with grandparents, parents, and other relatives who contracted the virus, but fortunately recovered. But then there are some 
we know and some people we did not know who didn't make it. And some of you lost loved ones and dear friends. Faculty did what we could to ease the disruption and pain while dealing with personal challenges of our own. Such things as children trying to learn at home, little children because their schools were closed, uh, trying to help them with their lessons, meetings that took place in addition to classes, even things like dogs barking uh, and trying to figure out who was going to stop it or cats jumping up in the middle of the table uh, during a meeting. There are all kinds of things that happened, but we dealt with it. All of us, we dealt with these. Some of you were lucky you had space in which to work. Even if, as one student told me, she was among relatives that she didn't much care for, but she had space. Others studied under the most difficult circumstances. In my own classes, I had students who had to jerry-rig access to the internet and had no quiet space at all to do their work or to participate in class. At this point, if the end is in, up to the pandemic is indeed near, we may all want to do some of the things we've missed with our yearnings and pent up energy. After the Spanish flu, we had the roaring 20s after all, with uh, the Charleston and speakeasies and the automobile had been invented uh, by then and people racing around all over the place and everybody wanting to have finally a good time. I was on a TV show and the moderator asked uh, each one of us what we wanted to do, what was the thing we most wanted to do or wanted, expected to happen uh, with this pandemic uh, coming to an end, if it is. And everyone had very ponderous and impressive policy points to make. But when my turn came, all I could think about was, and I said it, I want to go out with my friends and sit in our favorite restaurant and drink a bottle of wine and have great conversations about whatever comes into our heads and be able to hug each other. You may want to do something like that or you may have other things in mind. But part of what some of us may be feeling is a sense of survivor's guilt. We're here and people we cared about and people we are not here, they didn't make it. If that applies to you, don't suppress the guilt, savor it as a reminder that maybe we have a duty to honor and recall those who didn't survive and work to make the world a more just place in their memory. And if that's the outcome, if that's what you end up being able to feel, follow whatever is your passion. Maybe climate change, which applies uniformly to everyone. Gun control, feeding the hungry, worrying about the hundreds of thousands of children who have died of malaria, for example, while the pandemic rages. I think about not just George Floyd and Nakia Bryant, but Andrew Brown. And it's hard to think about anything else when almost every day there are unarmed or suspicious circumstance, black people killed by police or law enforcement. Uh, you can think back to Trayvon Martin, who all he really wanted to do was to get some Skittles and walk around in the development where he actually lived. Uh, and Brianna Moore in her own bed, killed in her own bed. And Eric Garner, who was selling loose cigarettes because he had no other occupation and needed money and then says, you know, I can't breathe and dies. And before that, Eleanor Bumpers uh, in her apartment with a mistaken uh, police invasion when she gets killed. And before that, and on and on and on and on and on. So we can think about all those things as they continue. That we survived, you and me, so far, by the way, doesn't mean we're free. We're more bound. We can take time to celebrate graduation, and you should celebrate. But we also need to take time to recalibrate 
what we must all do. In a sense is a reconsideration of the trajectory of our lives. You should take pride in facing the world as it is and persevering anyway during these times. It should mean that you're better prepared to overcome whatever obstacles you might encounter in life. Experience, that is, knowing you can overcome major adversity should elicit more confidence going forward. All of us who came through, no matter how difficult, should know one thing, we are resilient. And if among everything else you do, you accept a message that I deliver all the time to my students, that maybe you should think about spending some of your time in making positive social change. I can think of no more worthy all-consuming passion than the struggle for human rights. And I can assure you, based on my own experience in all kinds of protests, whether it's against a war, or whether it's to get into apartheid in South Africa, or whatever the situation happens to be, that there's no better high than being with a little group of committed people making great sacrifices in a worthy cause. And if you do take this path, remember nonviolent protest, a well-timed persistent disruption is an essential ingredient of politics and even more important, each generation must make its own dent in the wall of injustice. You may not tear down the wall and you won't in a generation these walls that are thick and almost impenetrable, but you can make a dent in the wall of injustice. And if you decide to stay in touch, as so many of my students do, I will read your messages and keep track and watch you with interest and even comment on what you do with your lives, even if you don't like my suggestions or my comments. But for now, at this time, my soul looks back in wonder at how we all got over. Congratulations to you all. Our deepest thanks to Professor Mary Frances Berry and to graduating senior Justin Greeman for their inspiring contributions to this college celebration of the class of 2021. As we close, please note that the college graduation celebration webpage contains links to a searchable photo gallery of the class of 2021 with their names, majors, and greetings and it also includes video tributes from notable college alumni. From the college and the School of Arts and Sciences to all of you, graduates, families, guardians, and friends, our warmest congratulations to the college class of 2021. We will miss you. We hope you will stay in touch and return often to Penn in the coming years to see us again in person. For now, all the best from all of us.
Best of all. 